And welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Weekly Show, a podcast brought to you by the Livingston Parish News. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news, and this is Around Livingston. It's where I sit down with this gentleman who is going to take a second to introduce himself here in just a second. Uh, and we talk about what's going on in Livingston Parish politics, news, and lifestyle. So, sir, if you'll take a second to introduce yourself real quick. Hey, this is David Gray, news writer with the Livingston Parish News. And we have plenty to talk to, about today, so we're going to be on a pretty heavy tilt. Y'all got to excuse me. Didn't sleep real well last night. Um, I've been stumbling over my words all morning, so I'm going to try to try to keep it succinct and to the point. So first and foremost, we're celebrating. We're going to talk about two celebrations. Actually, after two points real quick, this is running on Wednesday, uh, October 12th. Tomorrow, Thursday, October 13th, a couple of big items on the Parish Council agenda. Um, take uh, just a minute or two and, and discuss those with us. Yeah, the uh, first that's going to be the uh, public hearing and adoption for two ordinances. One that would put a year long moratorium on class five injection wells. Uh, injection wells have been the big topic uh, in the parish council over the last several weeks. This is the this is the type of injection well that doesn't store the carbon dioxide emissions. Those are the class six ones. This is the one that uh, these companies use to gather the data. Uh, to study the area, the geology and makeup of the area that they're planning to store these emissions in. So that is uh, what's on the agenda. And then also Tracy Growenhouse in District 7, his uh, district zoning map. This is the first one that should be going up for a vote. Uh, they've had some other ones that were on the agenda to go up for the vote in the past, but then the councilman pulled them after, I guess, speak with their constituents. So this could, and Tracy Grohenhaus has been uh, kind of the big proponent for, for zoning in the parish. I know he's done a few podcasts with you over the last uh, year or so about it. So his could be the first one that is voted on. So like I said, th those are two pretty big important items. I so just wanted to make sure that we touch base on them. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, sir. And be on the lookout for David's stories coming out Thursday night or Friday morning. Talking about that and um, Councilman Girlinghouse. Uh, did reach out to me and is probably going to be stopping by here Friday morning to do a podcast with us on, you know, the zoning. He and as as you discussed, he and I have sat down quite a few times over the past few years, uh, talking about that, and it looks like uh, his efforts are finally coming to fruition. It'll be interesting to hear what he has to think about uh, what's going on in the other districts. And then eight to go. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, one down, eight to go. So getting on to uh, the rest of what we have to talk about today, we've got two community celebrations to discuss, one upcoming and one has occurred. The let's talk about the one that has occurred first. Our Lady of the Lake celebrated 10 years, time mm -hmm. flies, uh, here in Livingston Parish. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that was uh, that was a few weeks ago. They celebrated their 10-year anniversary, and uh, they, they had a ceremony that was attended by a lot of, uh, obviously, officials from the hospital system. And you also had some elected officials. I know Buddy Mincy was there. I believe President Leighton Ricks was there. Uh, but, yeah, I did, this was just kind of one of the things. When you look back on the the history of this project, I did, you know, I looked at some older stories from when it was being discussed to when it was actually being built. And you you don't, this, this project kind of coincided with the parish's growth, which is the part that I found most interesting, uh, you know, as we've talked about with the development in the parish, it's Livingston Parish has grown by like 50,000, you know, residents or so since 2000. And you have that many people, you really need a hospital that's that's in the community. And, uh, you know, for years, people would have to go, you know, mostly to the to the Lake Hospital in Essen or, you know, what, other, you know, any other uh, hospitals around the area, but they didn't really have a 24 seven emergency services one in their parish. But that changed in 2012, a uh, six million dollar project to build the lake that's uh, just off the interstate in Walker. So, yeah, I mean, it just just, uh, you know, feel good story. Just kind of talking it that, you know, highlights the growth of the parish and its continued growth. I believe they said they've had over a million uh, uh They've served over a million people or something since that time. So, I mean, they've been busy. And they were one of the first, you know, they kind of served as a hub for for emergency responses during the flood. Uh, I know it was the first uh, hospital in the parish or, uh, yeah, hospital in the parish that started doing COVID-19 testing when uh, the pandemic started. So, so yeah, I mean, just, uh, just showing the growth of the parish and uh, what it's meant to have that hospital here. Right, and uh, you know, making it easier uh, for a lot of people who used to have to go into Baton Rouge to see their specialists, uh, floors two and three, 
or full of them. Yes. Um, eyes, orthopedists, that sort of thing. Uh, so if your doctor is in Baton Rouge, you may want to check and see if he or she comes out this way uh, into the Walker area. The second one, has, community celebration, has not occurred yet. That will occur or take place, you know, overuse of the word occur. That will take place this Saturday, October 15th, and it's for um, the Southside Mega Campus. Yes, the, uh, that opened earlier this year, as y'all remember, uh, for the first day of school opening time after about a two-year project. Uh, this is, you know, one of the, this is, uh, I guess they say the art, I guess you could call it, uh, a model of 21st century learning. This is, this campus is incredible. I remember going there the, the first day of school and, uh, if you thought Denham Elementary was incredible, which it was, this kind of just goes to another level. Cause I mean, it is two schools on the same campus. So it obviously is bigger, but it's also, uh, also looks a little bit more modern because I know, you know, Denham Elementary, not that it's not modern, but it was going for that sort of aesthetic, you know, the, the brick uh, outer, uh, the brick exterior was kind of going to match the antique village, which is, you know, right down the road from it. But this has a more modern look and uh, they're holding the community celebration. This will be the public's first chance to really walk in and see it. Uh, starts at 10 a.m. on Saturday, uh, so they'll have you know plenty of people speaking. So, if you want to come see a new school in the parish, see what uh, 45 million dollars looks like, this is your chance to do that. Speaking of schools, sticking with that theme, uh, we're going to move up to Live Oak. But first, a little background here: uh, you talked about the Southside Mega Campus, and actually, Southside Elementary used to be on Range Avenue in Denham mm -hmm. Springs. Uh, most of the campus was torn down after the flood, except the gym and some ancillary classrooms, which has been turned into the Dim Springs High School STEM Center. Live, and, and it is, you know, they have a robotics team, uh, engineering it classes, has exploded. media classes. Yes, it's been, it's become very popular. Live Oak had money in their budget and found uh, revenue to build their own STEM Center. Yes. And had a groundbreaking here recently. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that this is something that they've been wanting to. It's been in the talks for five or six years, and I mean, you kind of forget how n new that campus is. It was. It's not even ten years old, I believe. Uh, I, I think they said, yeah, it's in its ninth year. Uh, the new Live Oak High campus, and this is something that they've been wanting to do since shortly after moving into that new campus is to build a new STEM center. So they, they held a groundbreaking for it. It's officially, let me get the wording, or I always forget the, uh, the wording, but, um, but yeah, it's going to, it's going to be $6 million project, the Live Oak Institute of Medicine, Aviation, and the Arts. It'll be available to grades nine through 12. Uh, and it's just going to continue the parish's, uh, focus emphasis on career and technical education. And that's something that, that some of the officials who spoke kind of we're talking about, you know, Livingston Parish is one of the state leaders by district uh, in terms of the money that they spend on career and technical training, and and it shows. And this is uh, this is a project that they're uh, that will you know be a big benefit to the Live Oak community. Uh, Live Oak is already one of the top high schools in the state when you look at uh, the ratings that come out every year. And that should only grow with this with this new facility. And this is something that, uh, Principal Beth Jones talked with her afterwards. She said she's been trying to get in the works for five or six years. Miss Dickerson, the school board member who represents that area, also said that that's something that she's been focusing on. It's going to be two buildings on each side of the administration building on the front. And it's also going to include, they're going to kind of remodel the, the front that faces LA 16. And they're going to put a fountain in the, the detention pond in front of the campus with lights. And so, I mean, it's going to give the school a fresher look as well. So it's not just going to be the two new buildings. It's also going to kind of just re upgrade the, the front of the campus because that, that campus, there's a, you know, four or five other schools in the area. You got a few elementary schools in the middle school and junior high, but they all end up at the high school. So that's really the focus of the Live Oak community. Sure. And, you know, after about nine, 10 years, you know, if, if you got the money, give it a little face. Yeah. So moving over to the fair. Uh, first and foremost, we're just going to talk about the fair in general. Uh, it's good to be back. It missed uh, in 2020 due to COVID and in 2021 due to uh, uh, Ida. Ida. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I almost said Ian, you know, there's oh, yeah. Ian or Ida, but no, Ian was this year. Ida was last year. 
so due to Hurricane Ida, but this year went off without a hitch. Beautiful weather. Yeah, I don't want to say without a hitch because some people who couldn't get there because of the traffic might say otherwise. Uh, but... That's fair. <laughs> I think a lot of people were excited it was back. But yes, no, I, I went out there Saturday. Uh, yeah, I went out there Saturday afternoon. I got there around four o'clock just to get uh, just to get some fair photos and. I remember when I was leaving, I left a little after six. So I was there for about two ish hours. And as I was leaving, it you know, didn't, didn't take me any time to get in there. Luckily, I think because a lot of people were probably still partying from the LSU game. That was a disaster earlier that day. Um, <laughs> I was at that disaster. Yeah. Yeah. I feel bad for you. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I got there, you know, no problem pulled right in. But when I left around six or six thirty, the traffic on 190 was. I mean, a good bit past B Watts. I mean, so, I mean, it was, I mean, I know some people on Friday night were saying that it was too, uh, it was approaching Walker on 190 and to hold in on 190 uh, coming from the other direction. So, so yeah, a lot of people were excited to be back there, but uh, I don't know if they were quite prepared for the traffic that came from that, but you haven't learned. They hadn't had it in three years. So it was kind of a, a relearning experience for everybody but yeah judging by that judging by you, you see people posting pictures on social media i know a lot of people were happy to be back so so yeah that that was a uh, it, it looked like it had a good turnout just judging by the field uh fields that were full of cars the long lines to get into the fairgrounds and then all the people that were there so it looked like it, everybody was happy that it was back Yes, sir. And then on Tuesday evening, uh, as is tradition, uh, we have missed a couple lately. Uh, we had never really missed a spelling bee in the past. And then for the flood in 2016, we missed it. And then, of course, in 2020 because of COVID. And then in 2021 because there was no fair due to Ida. Uh, but this year we got back on track. The mm -hmm. new sponsors a spelling bee every year for sixth graders. Uh, you could not be there because you were at Walker covering a different event, but Rob was there. We're not entirely sure if Rob's going to be able to make it in this week to do a podcast, so I just kind of wanted you to give us the highlights on what happened at the Spelling Bee. I know I did moderate it, but a lot yeah, of Yeah, I know. I was about to say, that's a, that, that would be you. It's time for me to question you, but no. Uh, no, Brody uh, Robinson from North Corbin Junior High won it, and I believe you had 24, you had 24 kids that yep. were there. Also, every seat was filled from 13 schools, and basically this is the – the middle schools across the parish they hold spelling bees throughout the year and then they award uh they award the top three finishers and the first and second place finisher they compete in the in the spelling bee that's sponsored by us whereas the third place one is an alternate in case one of those two cannot come so yeah so brody robinson was first place and then uh gosh uh but yeah, it sounded like y'all had a good y'all had a good turnout. I know you said you got caught by one of the kids got caught by a train, so it had to be delayed a few minutes. So it happens. Yeah, you're right next to the to the railroad tracks right there. You have to literally go over them to get it to the fairground. So so it happens. But yeah, from what Rob said and from what you said, it sounded like a fun night. Yes, uh, it was. Uh, it went pretty. It went at a pretty steady tilt. Um, I, you know, it's always tough moderating that because you know. Uh, kids get nervous. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, there was a huge crowd, uh, which was which was. Rob said that too. Yeah, he uh, said that they all. It was packed. It was. It was. Yeah. It started off packed. Um, you know, I always ask the audience to applaud when uh, you know, and people say it, that seems kind of strange, but you know, I always want uh, these kids to to get a round of applause because they came and competed even when they miss a word. Yeah. You know, if, if they're disqualified, I always want people to give them a pause for com getting up there and competing because a lot of, you know, there are a lot of kids in the school system who didn't make it up there. Yeah. So those kids deserve that. Uh, but yeah, a, a very good competition. Um, and I believe I made, the title in print was Mammoth because that was the word uh, Mr. Robinson won. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's where that came from. So... Uh, yeah, uh, and if we get a chance to talk to Rob about it, we will, but I appreciate you, um, um, discussing that because it was part of the fair. Again, we do that every Tuesday night. Uh, moving on to our last subject is, uh, an indictment has been levied on a, uh, is he a former sheriff's deputy? It's current. Current sheriff's yeah. deputy, uh, via grand jury, uh, give us, a, in print, we said that a decision would be forthcoming from the grand jury, and of course that that happened Tuesday. So tell yep. us a little bit about what happened. Yeah, the uh, the 
this stems from an accident that occurred over the summer, uh, yeah, in July, around 1 a.m., July 15th, where a sheriff's deputy was responding to a call and rear-ended a car that was, that was stopped on LA-16. Uh, the, the accident killed a 33-year-old mother of four. And so the investigation was then led by Louisiana State Police, and they turned over their findings recently to uh, District Attorney Scott Perilou's office. And then, like you said yesterday, uh, Tuesday, the grand jury convened to consider whether or not to bring criminal charges against that deputy. But in the end, they decided to go with a traffic citation, a careless operation of the vehicle. So that is what the deputy, who has now been identified as Corey Winburn, was was cited with uh, J uh, Sheriff Jason R. released a statement as well, saying that they are his office is fully cooperated with with all the investigative agencies, state police, district attorney's office, and that they are also conducting their own internal investigation to see if any discipline needs to be handed out to Mr. Winburn. Uh, you know, and Mr. R. just kind of said that from the beginning. Uh, but other than that, there haven't been many details released. Uh, uh, one thing that was that was said of both drivers is that they were neither was wearing a seatbelt at the time of the crash. So um, that's something that I know that the sheriff said that they were going to be looking into. But uh, but yeah, so that has not been announced yet. He said he'll have no further comment at the time. Uh, and you know, we reached out to an attorney for the family. Haven't heard back from them either. But uh, but we'll see any more information that comes from this. We'll definitely get it out there. Well, thank you, sir, for keeping up with that because I know you had been kind of hanging around all day waiting for waiting for some kind of announcement, uh, and then you had to run off for the Denim Council and and followed up on that later. Yep. Uh, so we appreciate you sticking with that. So thank you, sir. We've been here uh, for 17 minutes. Oh, uh, not too bad. I, I think our longest individual show to date. So if you'll introduce yourself. Hey, this is David Gray, news writer with the Lives of Paris News. And my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys out there for joining us for the Livingston Paris News Weekly Show. Please remember the news is on. This is around Livingston. I need to say that. Uh, it's where we talk about what's going on in news, politics, and lifestyle here in the parish. Please remember the news is on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print on Thursdays. at $7 a month to get that in your mailbox. We're also online, www.livingstonparishnews.com. We appreciate you joining us, and we'll see you next time.